Thank you so much for joining me, and welcome back. Today I'm going to teach you how to make confetti collars. I think I like to think about a certain format, say the format of an Instagram post, the format of a cooking show or a music video, um, as a sort of Trojan horse. I can use that frame to get into the viewer's line of sight, to get them to look more closely, to get them to wait. And then once I get through the gates, maybe a whole different set of ideas bust in. Cooking with the erotic. The idea of a cooking show based on Audre Lorde's text, The Uses of the Erotic, The Erotic is Power. There's a part where she describes needing a bag of margarine when she was a young girl. And she says that before it used to be a completely white solid with a little yellow kernel on the top. And you would leave it out for a while to soften. And then you would knead it gently back and forth, over and over until the whole pound bag of margarine was thoroughly colored. And she said that she wanted to see the erotic as the yellow kernel within herself. And in that context, I was really interested in the way food and objects became a proxy for the body, but also how it became a way of owning labor so that just enjoying the tactile experience um, could generate its own sort of value. I really love when the food starts to just kind of get all over my hands. Um, kind of beyond the point of return. My studio is kind of somewhere between a set and a kitchen, and I try to make it kind of be ambiguously in between different spaces for making. So I'm thinking about like the dramatic artist flinging around paint in his studio at the same time as I'm thinking about like the cooking show hostess creating a world inside of her home. Kind of blur the lines between all of those things. Stay tuned, we have something great coming up next. I always thought of myself as a painter and I'm still kind of thinking about surface, but this time it's the surface of the screen. So while I'm here at Brick, I'm kind of working on this Instagram account where it looks basically like a normal food Instagram. And so I'll get subscribers that way. Sometimes I adopt the name of a famous chef and then add official to the end. I think about the setup as still lives. And if they're still lives, where are the like memento mori? Memento mori, that's when you sneak in something that reminds you that one day you're gonna die. Where are the things that are just like up on the edge of being delicious or disgusting? Because sometimes that edge is really, really close. And sometimes I just like to step like one toe over it. Well, if you look closely, the shrimp's on a hairy stomach. And then if you look again, you'll see that the bowl of vegetables is frozen, so you wouldn't be able to bite into it. I'm thinking about lifestyle blogs and the way they can be really impractical, but they're trying to speak to something you could do at home or something you could mimic. What if I make something that has that, that satisfaction, the satisfaction you get from just looking at a beautiful image, from imagining eating a delicious thing? What if I can give you that satisfaction in a world that never really deigns to say it's reality, that from the beginning is kind of surreal? The responses are usually just simply positive or something like, yum. Sometimes it'll be like, wait, what? In both of those responses, maybe you're bringing something fun to someone's day. See you next week.